you know what? Even though the opening credits are made out of construction paper, I'm really going to try and sit through this movie with an optimistic attitude. No matter what, I'm going to try and find something positive to say at the end. Well, here's hoping. This chick Roxy's driving home, when out of nowhere she runs into a caveman. He's played by Richard Keel, the same actor who played Mr. Larson in Happy Gilmore. He stole my jacket! I believe that's Mr. Gilmore! Anyway, he fondles her for a little bit and then runs away. Her boyfriend Tom shows up. He's played by Arch Hall Jr. I've never heard of him before. He gives new meaning to the term pretty boy. His hair is always perfectly bleach blonde and blow dried, and every scene he's in, he looks like he's posing for some GQ print ad. Her father takes a trip in a helicopter to try to find the caveman, and for some reason, he shows up in a tuxedo. Other times, he's standing around in his tidy whities He also happens to be a phenomenal musician. Not only can he sing and play guitar at the same time, but he also manages to somehow play percussion, bass, strings, and background vocals, all while looking as if he's putting forward no effort whatsoever. If you don't love me, I was a fool. The actor's father, Arch Hall Sr., was the director of the movie, and he also has a co-starring role as Roxy's father. Apparently, this movie was supposed to make his son a star. Instead, it probably made him a star bucks employee. The father gets dropped off in the middle of nowhere on a quest to find the caveman. Well, apparently he picked the perfect spot because he's not there 30 seconds before the caveman shows up. Well, he gets kidnapped. But not to worry, DiCaprio takes his doom buggy out to find him. These doom buggy scenes go on and on and on and on. Whee! My father's dying of dehydration or being blunted to shit by a big fucking caveman! Paddle to the metal, bruh! They show up to the location, but the father is nowhere to be found. These two bicker like a couple of four-year-olds. Well, they won't come near a fire, I know that much. And I'm not going to have you take a shot at something that turns out to be dead. Okay, okay, I'll put it away in one condition that you crawl in and get some rest. Okay. Don't be stupid, God! Oh, Jesus. Seriously, are we really supposed to believe this fucker's playing this? At one point, he looks like he fell asleep halfway through the song. Well, it looks like the caveman's about to be the ultimate music critic right now. Come on, do it, do it, do it! Well, he doesn't do anything. The radio turns on and it scares him away. But he leaves his caveman club behind. Uh, um, okay. Well, that scene went nowhere. More doom buggy fun! Brad Pitt Stang goes off on his own while Roxy stays behind. The caveman shows up and kidnaps her too. He takes her to Bronson Caves in Hollywood where she's reunited with her father. So the caveman shows her around the cave, gives her food, shows her his caveman artwork, stomps around, lizards fuck, and they stretch a half hour short film to 90 minutes. Meanwhile, Twat Bayo is taking himself a snooze. He gets up, he gets into his doom buggy and proceeds with his mission. Knowing that this guy is their only hope for survival, father and daughter pretty much make themselves at home in the cave. Iga comes home with flowers and, uh, uh, hey, uh, dude, uh, over here, where are you going? Whatever. She shaves the caveman, he eats the shaving cream, and then tries to rape her. Keep in mind that as this scene was shot, there's a boom operator, a sound guy, producers, financiers, and a whole crew of people standing around who actually thought they were making art. Well, Channing Tatum shows up and they manage to escape. Back in civilization, Roxy and the Fonz are getting ready to go to a party. Wow, wow, wow! 
I apologize for anything negative I ever said about Megan Fox. With less than eight minutes left in the movie, I'm starting to get that sinking feeling. Well, the caveman busts in, the cops show up, people scream, and just like the Titanic, the band keeps playing. I think I may have underestimated Arch Hall Jr.'s musical talent. In the middle of the song, he's able to take his guitar off, hand it to another guy, and have him resume without missing a single note. Seriously, this guy is the most talented musician in the world. Uh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hey, don't try and upstage the star of the movie, you asshole. Okay, okay, where was I? Oh yeah, the caveman. Well, with less than a minute left, he shows up, gets shot, and that's the end of the movie. Now, this is the part of the movie review where I'm supposed to put my cynicism on hold and try and say something positive about the film. Hell, if I can muster up some good things to say about Jennifer's body, I should be able to say something positive here. Well, it's uh, public domain, so you can download it for free. You could probably find it on DVD in the dollar bin. There's a pretty funny Mystery Science Theater and Elvira version of it. Um, I'll try and review a better movie tomorrow. You know what? Let's just end it with that.